Coming up in a matter of minutes is an MTV classic concert with the police. From 1984, it's Synchronicity Live, and that happens at 9 p.m. tonight. And now we're going to check out another concert that Sting attended, and it was Live Aid. And it was more than just an incredible roster of artists performing. It was a hugely successful benefit that helped raise money and awareness for the growing problem of worldwide hunger. And uh, a lot of times when uh, people ask me, well, what was uh, one of the special moments at MTV? There were a lot, but in my mind, Live Aid was, was just unbelievable, just uh, one of the nicest things that I've ever participated in. By now, you've probably heard all the statistics, but here they are one more time. On July 13th, 66 bands performed in front of a total audience of a billion and a half people and raised $80 million to help fight the Ethiopian famine. But numbers aren't everything. The real story of Live Aid might be that if one person pushes hard enough, he can help change the world. Bob phoned me up in January and said, would you do it? And I said, boy, if you can get it together, of course. Not thinking that he actually would. And um, that, for me, is the main achievement of the day, just actually getting this together. Getting the artists together was a massive undertaking. But getting the concert televised live around the world was nothing short of a technological miracle. Thousands of technicians worked behind the scenes in the Philadelphia Broadcast Center to keep the concerts on the air in 150 countries, while over a thousand journalists, photographers, and camera crews from around the world recorded the event that would become instant history. In the middle of things, there seemed to be this weird awareness. I mean, uh, I think uh, Mick Brown in the Sunday Times put it best that one had the eerie feeling of cities that opposite ends of the earth waving at each other. And I think that was true. Like, I mean, it sounds terrible corny, you know, but it really was, in a tangible and physical way, the word, the globe was linked. It was a very, very peculiar atmosphere. And I haven't seen, I haven't experienced it before in my life. And I, I'm not sure we will again, but I would like to. Live Aid was a who's who of all the best 1985 had to offer. But the concerts also reunited bands from the past, like Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, and The Who, who hadn't played together since 1982. It ain't time to think about it, really. We just said we'd do it. This is the right reason to do what we did. Live Aid focused the eyes of the world on the rock and roll community, proving for both the artists and the audience that music can be more than just entertainment. Yeah, there was a wonderful feeling that day. I'll never forget it. About 19... 81, it had to be 81 or 82, over in the Meadowlands. And he came up to me with all this enthusiasm, saying, I'm going to record an album. I'm doing it at my uncle's studio, and I'm going to be a big star. And he introduced himself, and he was John Bon Jovi. And I said to him, you know, good luck, kid, thinking, you know, how many people really are going to make it and be that successful, right? <laughs> Here's Bon Jovi, you give love a bad name. I am Martha Quinn's nightmare! Anybody out there up for a bottle of anything and a glazed donut? You're gonna have to face it, you to love Welcome to Jerry Falwell's nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud to present an award to everyone who's ever been nominated for anything ever in the history of the world. And the winner is... Aha! 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 Oh, stop it! Oh, I can't take it any longer! Thanks a lot, you guys! Here we go, walking off the stage. We get the funniest looks from... Walking off the stage. Off the stage. Off the stage.